pills. So get them ready if you have them, four or five, right? And after that, we're going to talk about what we're doing next week, okay? Before we continue, and I say this every single week, this is why we're here. It's no good to be an amazing actor and not get out there and put your work out there. The early actor studio, most of you know the actor studio, which is the one you see on TV. That's, let's call it the business aspect. And they've done a great job. You know, they interview people, all that. The original actor studio was literally a hole in the wall, and it still is a hole in the wall. Both the one in New York and LA, the tiny. And there's some amazing actors in it. I mean, they're real craftsmen, not good, brilliant. But they never managed to learn that one aspect of your work is uh, the, the craft and the other aspect of your work is the, the business side of things. And you've got to learn to master both. Some of us are very good over here. We're artists, that's great. But you've also got to learn that there are things over here called money and deadlines and agreements and if you can manage to master both, you have a career. If you're only an amazing actor and you are full of acting theories and you can talk acting all day long and you're great in your living room, no one cares. It doesn't matter. This is about mastering this. And this is what we do. We talk about acting craft, but then you've got to get out there and connect it. Get out there and push your work out, be seen, do your work be responsible. And one thing I talk about, and I hate to use this song, it's such a, I'm not gonna say it's a shitty song because let's face it, it's great in the sense that we're all hearing it. You know, you see that commercial right now because of COVID-19, the one that goes, we're all in this together. Oh my God, if I hear it one more time, I'll fucking throw up. But the point being, and most people need to understand this, we as a film industry are all in this together. No one cares where you studied as an actor, no one cares what technique or method you use to work. No one gives a shit. The point is that you turn up on a film set and you do your work and someone else does some their work and somehow together you're aiming for the same path. You're aiming for the same result, meaning we want collectively to do our work. Don't be one of these actors that goes, well, I studied over here and I studied over there and I only do this. No one cares where you studied. We're here to paint together. Grab your brush, I'll grab mine, go for it. You have to agree on what the vision is as a director. Meaning the director has a vision and what that means is the director has the point of view from this film. And I've said this in the past, and I'll say it again. It's a good example to use. Most of us, if you're over 20, right? There's a wonderful song by Cat Stevens called Father and Son. And most of you, right, have that song. It's a father and son talking back to each other. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it easy, all that shit, right? I can make a film with those words from the perspective of the father. So I lean heavily towards that. Or I can make a film from the perspective of the son. Exact same script. But it's the director's right to say, this is my vision. I'm leaning towards this. Now, you as an actor have to have that understanding, but you still, and I tell these people, you still have to be able to voice your thoughts about the character and your ideas about how things work, choices. But what we're aiming for, and I'm adamant about this, it's what we call educated opinions. It's no good for you to just come and voice an opinion, well, I think and I think this, based on nothing. That's just you, that's what the critics do. Who gives a shit about the critics, really, right? We want an educated idea as an actor, meaning I think the, the character would stand like this based on the script, or the character will stand like this based on the script. There's a reason for your justification. And beyond that, this is why we're here. Beyond that, it's one thing to have an idea, it's another thing to be able to actually execute the idea. Because you don't want to waste anyone's time if you cannot execute. 
Now, there's a very good chance, and this is why we started this journey together, that most of you are sitting down like this. This is what most people's acting career looks like. You sit there on your laptop, you watch a film, you get inspired, you get on your laptop, you find some acting teacher online, and they say something that inspires you, and you go, oh, that's very inspiring. Or they give you some acting tip, like we are tonight, and you go, oh, that's very interesting. Next time I get a script, I'll remember that. But what you're doing is living up here. That doesn't make you an actor. See, that's what I try to get across to people. What makes you an actor is to get up and get it in the body. Because there's a very good chance, and I'm going to say this every single week, every single week we do this class, I'm going to say at the beginning of the week, how many of you did any of the exercises that we did last week consistently, every day? Whatever the exercises were in the past. See, a lot of people know them intellectually, but that doesn't mean you master anything. Like I said, someone could make me, you know, show me how to do a triple somersault. I can't do a freaking triple somersault. The problem with acting is everyone can, thinks they can do it. Not everyone can. So I want you all, if, if we manage to, 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 to get anywhere with this lovely thing, to really understand this is work. It's physical work. It means getting up and doing things, not intellectually, not up here in the body. This is your instrument. And I say this without using the word artsy fartsy instrument. No, it's the body. At the end of the day, this has to be in tune. So a lot of the exercises that we do here, and I know what, what happens when we start doing certain exercises, people go, yeah, okay, I'll just skip this part. I'll get to the important information. You're out of shape. You need to understand that. There's a lot of very good actors that are in shape at the actor studio, but they're not out there doing the work. There's a lot of actors on this side of the fence getting work. They've all got their shit down. I got my this down and this down and this down. And they go to all the you know, stuff that we have to do for business, but they can't act. That's out there too. We know that. They don't have the acting skill. They got all the PR going. They got this and this and this and this, and they got great. You need both to have a career that keeps you at the top level, right? And craft isn't easy. Everyone thinks you've got to get this wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, acting teacher, dance teacher, Chris Apostolidis. Love you, man. He said to me once, uh, get your art, get your craft right. And he's right. Get your craft right. That's a lot of what we're doing here today, right? The other stuff is business. You need both. We will talk about both. Maybe next week I'll talk about, uh, you know, the business side of stuff. Show reels, headshots, uh, money, receipts, what's deductible, what's not, all that kind of crap. You need to know that, right? But over here, you need to learn the craft. And by the way, really quickly, there's amazing actors We'll take De Niro, for instance. De Niro is a wonderful, very, very, very giving actor. If you go one line and you say to him, hey, Bob, I've got one line. I'm playing opposite you. Can you sit there for me? He will sit there for you because he knows what it means for you to be a young actor with one line. But when he sits his ass on that chair for you to say your line, you better be ready. Meaning he's not going to sit there. If he, if he can tell you you haven't prepared and you haven't done your work, he's gone and he ain't coming back. So you need to be a giving actor. And remember, like I said at the beginning of this wonderful talk, that stupid song, it's not stupid, great, let's all write something that gets so far. We're all in this together, meaning we work together. It's a collaborative effort. Voice your ideas as actors, but you better be able to deliver them and you be able, be able, uh, be able to justify them. That's why we do a lot of this stuff here. Fair enough? It's a business, folks get to it. So now, here we go. Let's do the one exercise that we all hate, <laughs> relaxation. Now, if you're in the house with a whole bunch of other people, I know it's intimidating. I know it's kind of weird to do this stuff. Golden rule, don't talk about it. It's no one's business what you do. Don't talk about it. You're a human being, you just got to go through it. So you're going to do an exercise now. You don't want to come out of that exercise with someone going, oh, what did you work on? What did you think? What triggered it? It's no one's business what they do or what we use. That's our stuff. So let's start with relaxation. You're going to sit in your chair. As always, 
just sit there. I'm going to take a 40 minute exercise and give it five, 10 minutes at best. All right. Because most of you would leave if we did this for 40 minutes. We'll eventually start doing it for 40 minutes, right? Once again, for those of you that have never joined us before, for those of you that know what to do, knock yourself out. Don't wait for me. It's not a school here. We're not in kindergarten. Do your own work, right? Sit back in your chair, relax, and I'll do one arm as always so you understand what you're looking for. Sit back in the chair, relax, collapse the body, and make a sound. It looks like this. Uh... Remember, your focus is good for 5, 10, 20 seconds. That's about it. Meaning, as I'm talking and you're doing this, you're going to start thinking and you're going to start judging. What's this exercise for? I don't need it. I'll be amazing. When Marty Scorsese me, calls me, I'll be ready to go. And I'm like, no, get out of your head and move. Move. Move the shoulder now. Let's just focus on the shoulder. And you make a sound. I just felt it pop and grab a little bit. It looks like this. Uh, and focus on here. Right now, I just feel the muscle right here. You feel it right there. Really tune in, not intellectually, genuinely feel it. Feel it as you rotate this. Right there. And when you let it go, I just let it go. I want you to feel the difference. I'm more aware of this arm, bottom line. That little awareness brings my mind here, not there. Not into what the cameraman's doing or the lighting. No, no, that's not our business. Our focus is here. And you make a sound because sound opens up the body. Let's rotate the head. Make a sound as you work. Uh, don't overstrain anything. Just stay focused on what you feel physically, not emotionally, not intellectually. Physically feel the muscles as you rotate this stuff. Uh, uh. Bring your mind back to the body. You guys do the other arm while I talk to you. Go ahead and move the other arm. I want you all to understand. Great actors do this on a consistent level. And as I said last week and the week before, most of these amazing actors have Academy Awards and shit. There's no one here watching that has an Academy Award, and yet we don't do this. So do it. Do it for half an hour a day. You all have half an hour a day, right? It gets you out of your head. So whenever you're ready, rotate the shoulder. Make a sound as you work. Uh, and then relax. Very briefly, I did the two arms and the head. There you go. Uh, there's a better chance that to some degree, your mind stays with you a bit longer, a bit longer, a bit longer as you do this. We'll just do two or three more moves and we'll start working, right? Whenever you're ready now, this is a big move. Imagine you're going to punch forward <laughs> with an explosive sound. Take your arms to the back, like this to the side. Slowly tilt your head back whenever you're ready. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. It feels, for lack of a better word, invigorating. You feel your body more. You do, right? Once again, you're not doing it to feel your body. You're doing it to become more aware of your body. Think awareness. And also what it does to some degree is bring this, bring this, bring this. One final move. I gotta watch it, I got a mic on me. Sit back in your chair, drop your arms between your legs and very slowly, as far as you can, it's not yoga, crumble the body forward uh, with a sound. Sound is important. Come back up slowly, make a sound as you work. You got me? Fair enough. You guys keep working, move whatever you like. I'll keep talking to you. I'm just going to grab a glass of water. All this time I've been sitting there. So to a very, very small degree, to a very small degree, we just did this for 10 minutes, whatever it was. 
you should feel more aware of your own space now, right? You have your own instrument. As I said in the past, you're not gonna do this on a film set if not needed. If you do this consistently, you can just, <sighs> I'm here, I'm focused. Do you understand me? A lot of what we do, and we're gonna start doing sensory work now, a lot of what we do here is what's called personal and private. There is uh, an aspect to our work, which there's a lot of exercises that you do. You do like coffee cup and all that stuff. And a lot of kids go, a lot of students go, oh my God, when am I gonna get to the personalization exercise? You hear people saying, I personalize. I go, yeah, but do you know how? So it's not just an idea. You're personalizing things so that the props mean something to you, as we did last week, right? You're making things personal and private. A private moment, and I want you all to understand this, a private moment is a very unique exercise, Strasbourg used to do it, where it's something that's private to the character. Now, I'll give an example. I was a smart ass in class, believe it or not, and I remember saying to my teacher, you know, oh, is it me jerking off? And the teacher said to me, no, that's not private. What you do after that is private. And it was a beautiful statement by him. God bless him, still remember him. He's right. Because what you do after that is what makes it private. Anyone can do that. The private stuff of a character is also never, ever, ever written in a script. Last week, we talked about the script. The writer doesn't sit there thinking private moments. Great actors do. I remember once Philip Seymour Hoffman said, Phil, find the private moment. He said, if you put one in the film, your work is miles ahead of most other people's. Here are what private moments look like. Scratching, you got an itch somewhere. Taking a pill is very private. You don't sit there going to a restaurant, take your pills out and eat them. Or we tell people, then it comes down to character work. Some characters do, some don't. Combing your hair, brushing your teeth is private, cleaning out your ears. Now, also, you need to understand, and this is your work as an actor, who is your character private around? There's things I do with my wife around that's okay. There's things I don't do with my wife around. That's a private moment. And there's things that we do, what we call around the family, so we can be private as a family. Right now, most of us, because of the virus thing, we're all private at home. But to pack yourself up and look differently, it's different. So what does your character do that's private? And if you find one very, very simple moment and put it in the film, you're working at a whole other level. I'll give an example. And it wasn't in the script. Uh, when Meryl Streep did Doubt and she was playing with the radio, that's a private moment of a character. Private moment. Because she wouldn't dare get caught listening to the radio. It's what she would do privately. Do you fix yourself up? Do you check something? Because your character's going, little things. I don't want you to overdo them, but you better find a private moment that the character has. And most of these private moments live in like when the character's alone. If your character is waiting for someone, I'll give you an example. If in the scene, I'm waiting for someone, I'm in a restaurant or I'm at home, most actors look like they're waiting for someone. Your character is doing something usually private, cleaning up last minute. Someone's coming over, you clean up. You do something that's private. Now, please understand this, and I promise you we'll start working soon because I don't want to talk all that and talk till fucking 5 a.m. There's a wonderful scene in the hours. This is why I always say to you guys, I try and find how we can connect this work that we do to the final product. Otherwise, what's the point? There's a wonderful scene in the film, The Hours, where Meryl Streep is cooking. See, this is, once again, she's not being intellectual. And she talked about, here she's cooking and someone's coming over, she's having a party, right? Now, her character had gloves on because she's very, very private and she's cooking. And Meryl Streep wanted to know, if I go to answer the door, 
will I leave my gloves on or off? It's a very simple choice. Most of you wouldn't think twice about it. That's why we're not Meryl Streep. Most of us, me included, would just do it. Yeah, go answer the door. Which character would leave the gloves on? And if you knew who's coming, from memory, she knew who's coming. If I knew it's my best friend, I'd say, hey, man, hey, oh, yeah, come help. If it's the first official guest, that's different. I would take the gloves off. I would take the apron off. I would fix up my hair. I wouldn't, but you know what I'm saying? You'd clean up to some degree and you go, welcome to the party. You'd put your public face on. Ta-da, how are you? As opposed to, hey, get in here. I'm running late. And Meryl Streep wasn't sure if for this character that she knows enough, she should show him behind the scenes or she should be more formal. It's a, it's a brilliant question. It's a brilliant struggle because also she's the kind of woman that has never shown the behind the scenes side as a character. So her own struggle to answer the door with gloves on or off is what we call a private moment of a character. It's not the director's job to do this. The director is worrying about what lens to use. This is why we say we're, we're creating uh, chefs here. We're creating actors with a voice. Don't just turn up to a film set and say, tell me where to stand and tell me how to do it. it. There goes your career. You should say gloves on or gloves off and you don't have time. You don't have, the, just make up your own choice then. Say she in this moment would have the gloves on. I believe from memory she kept the gloves on because it fed all these other things. She has a meltdown after that in the kitchen, which they kept. Everything is up for grabs. Remember we said, where can you as a character find a private moment for the character to explore? And it was described as a private moment is something you would stop doing if someone else came in the room. You got me? And you'd be amazed how simple they are. Little things, this is a private moment, picking a fucking pimple there. This is a private moment. This is a private moment. Getting ready to talk about something is a private moment. You know, you analyze things, cooking, testing the food, doing something that you wouldn't do differently. Private moment, private moment, private moment. That takes your work to a higher level. So there's my quick tip for the acting world. Take it and leave, <laughs> right? Meaning, where do you find a private moment as your character during the scene? They are gems. That's why we say the, the, the camera is not there. It's you for a private moment. So now we're going to do an exercise. It's, called, it's a sensory idea, right? <coughs> coughing is a private moment, especially today. You don't just fucking cough in public. People think you got something. Let's try one exercise that gives us a sense of a private moment. Now, this takes about half an hour, give or take, right? I have to keep an eye on the time so we can look at people's monologues and stuff. There we go. This takes about half an hour. So if you're in the room with people, say, listen, I cannot be disturbed for the next half an hour. If you've got kids running around or dogs, just ignore them. Your job is to become private. You'll be amazed at the most mundane thing it could be a private moment, how you drink your coffee, how you look at a painting. Everything is a private moment. Now, I want you all, once again, and please, for those of you that have never joined us before, understand this, none of this shit is therapy. None of, it's all private work, but you use it all. Really quickly, since I have you here, and we start, I'll read something here, I'm going to find it. Paul Newman. Let me find. Let me find the thing, uh, I'll find it later, right? It's a moment that he talks to Paul Newman. This is a wonderful book uh, by Sidney Lumet. Amazing, amazing director. If you haven't seen it, watch out things like Dog Day Afternoon and uh, what's the other one? Uh, the, the Devil Knows Your Name. Okay, here it is. I want you to hear this, all of you. This includes directors. Please understand our work. Unfortunately, and I say this without being, you know, most directors don't understand acting work. We need 
a zone. We need to, you know what I'm saying? And we don't need to be directed with a result in mind, angry, or sad, or all that shit. That doesn't work. But listen to this. I mentioned earlier how much I admire what Paul Newman has done with his life. He's an honorable man. He's also a very private man. We had worked together in television in the early 50s and done a brief together in a Martin Luther King documentary. So when we got together on the verdict, we were immediately comfortable with each other. At the end of two weeks of rehearsal, I had run through the script. A run through is a rehearsal that goes straight through the entire script with no stops in between the scenes. There were no major problems. In fact, it seemed quite good, but somehow it seemed rather flat. When we broke for the day, I asked Paul to stay in the moment. I told him that while things looked promising, we really hadn't hit the emotional level we both knew was there in David Mamet's screenplay. I said that his characterization was fine, but he hadn't yet evolved into a living, breathing person. Was there a problem? Paul said that he hadn't had the lines memorized yet, and that when he did, it would flow better. We all fall for that shit. If I get the lines down, I'll be amazing. No, all you've done is got the lines down. You haven't done any of the internal work. I told him I didn't think it was the lines. There you go. I said that there was a certain aspect of Frank Galvin's character that was missing so far. And I want you to hear this. This is how amazing directors work. I told him that I wouldn't invade his privacy, but only he could choose whether or not to reveal that part of the character and therefore that aspect of himself. I couldn't help him with that decision. We lived near each other and rode home together. The ride that evening was silent. Paul was thinking. On Monday, Paul came into the rehearsal. Sparks flew. He was superb. His character and the picture took to life. I know the decision to reveal the part of himself that the character required was painful for him, but he's a dedicated actor as well as a dedicated man. And so to the end of the chapter heading, yes, Paul is a shy man and a wonderful actor and a race car driver and gorgeous. As I've said in the past, and Stella Adler was brilliant for this, you need to give your heart and soul in everything you do. Otherwise, you're just another banana that's memorized lines and done fucking staging and blocking. Anyone can do that. That's not acting. Please understand this. I want the writers to understand it. I want the, the uh, directors to understand it. So we work better together. Here's an exercise that we do as actors, which will help you become somewhat private. Now, I want you, as I've said in the past, to go and once again, tell everyone to leave you alone now. No discussion, you're not, you don't exist for the next half hour. I want you to imagine that you're in your childhood bedroom where you grew up. And once again, as we do all this, I'll tell you what the skill factor is. The skill factor, please understand this. It's not enough to imagine, that's up here. I want you to physically touch. So imagine you're standing with your door behind you. Or let's do this, face the door. I want you to touch your bedroom door, the one you grew up in. And I want you to make sure it's locked so no mom and dad or brother or sister can come in. Now, don't be an intellectual idiot about this. Don't go, my lock, my door had no lock. It's imagination. Put a lock there. That's what acting is about. You put whatever you need. So you can imagine a lock right there. But the door is real. It's your door. Touch it. Don't ever just think about this stuff. Touch the door. And it's okay to make a sound. Uh, the sound for now is in lieu of words. Touch your childhood door, touch the handle. Uh, and somewhere on the handle next to it, there's a light switch. Touch the light switch right there. So there's doorknob, light switch, door. I want you to look, as I've said in the past, if there was 10 doors in front of you right now, how do you know this one's yours? Were there any scratches on it? Dirt, mark, posters. Touch them. Whenever you're ready, I want you to turn around. And now the door is behind you. I'm facing my room. Now, whenever you're ready, I want you to walk to your window. Now, look, if the window is 20 steps away, don't walk 20 steps away because you'll be where I am right now. And you don't have a big enough space as I do. Some of you might. If your window is five, you know, 20 steps away, just take two in that direction. 
it's got to make sense for your brain. If I go down here, my window's not here. My brain's going to go, where am I going? But here, it makes sense. I'm in my window now. And I can see my backyard. I can feel the curtains. I don't remember if I have blinds or not. Put something there. Whatever your mind makes real, you put it there as you touch this stuff. Touch the glass. And as you're doing this, let's make it nighttime. It's nighttime right now. Why change things? Right now it's 8 p.m. It's nighttime where we are, whatever it is. Wherever you are, make it nighttime. And look at your backyard as you're touching things. Even if you put, I'm going to move my window around. I'm going to put it over here so you can see me. Even if you put your head against your imaginary window and look outside. To some degree, you're private now. I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at my backyard. I'm looking at the grass. I'm looking at the tree that my dad used to have and my mom and there's the garden. And I can see the fence. And I can touch the glass again. I can breathe on the window, breathe on the window. And write something on it. Write whatever you like. There you go. What you write is private information. And to some degree now, I've established my window. I can see my backyard. It's nighttime. But I can make out things enough. And over here, once again, go back to stand where your window is, your, your door, sorry. There's my door behind me. Touch, touch, touch. So I've got my door. And I got my window over here. One more ingredient we need to create. Whenever you're ready, I don't care if you use a chair or a couch or whatever. I want you to sit on your bed. Now, my bed, if I sat on my bed, I would look like this. And you will not be able to see me. So what I'm going to do, uh, all of you pay attention to the screen. Right now, my, wind, my door is here and my window is here. I'm literally going to move everything around. There we go. Now my door is here and my window is here. So you can see me, there's the camera. I want you now to touch. We did this, I think the first or second class. I want you to touch your bed right there. Touch it. What was the bed like? And it's not just a bed sheet. Who made it for you? Who made your bed? Who cleaned it for you? Touch it. Smell it. You remember that bedspread. Now, see, the point is when you're doing this on a film set, you don't sit there going, I'm working on my bedspread. It's named mommy. Fuck off. No one's business. It's your private business. You could sit there while someone's telling you notes or someone doing your hair or makeup and say, what are you doing? I'm working. That's what I'm doing. I don't tell people what they're doing. Touch. And then touch your pillow. The pillow matters. Touch your pillow. Pick up the pillow. Embrace it. There we go. Touch your pillow. I want you to smell your pillow where your head used to sit. It's your pillow. You could make this pillow whosoever you like. I could make it one of my kids because they matter. I could make it my father because he passed away recently. So it could, it could be heightened. I could spend five, don't need much time for this one. I could spend five minutes, imagine, it'd be a wreck. I don't want to do it, but you know what I'm saying? Point is to make it theirs. See, now I can't get the smell of my dad out the fucking pillow. So there it is. It's the pillow. Put it there. And we don't work off what we call neutral stuff. I want you to find a letter under your pillow that you wrote when you were a kid. See, this is a private moment. And it's called make-believe, it's not real. So find a letter, it's called make-believe, it's called acting, that you wrote when you were a kid. And just read it to yourself without saying a word. Right now we have no words, I don't care if you just go blah, 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 blah. I don't care if you go blah, blah, blah. I don't care if you say the words of a script, 
but you're marrying it. This is called substitution for those of you that you so many actors care. I substitute and you don't fucking clue what you're doing. This is called substitution. I'm substituting these words to that script. Marry the words together. I want you to find something you wrote as a kid. Could be about life, could be about your acting. And then leave it there. And now what I want you to do, and as we've done this exercise before, I don't know where or when, but I know we've done it before. To some degree now you feel private. You're in your room. Now go find everything you hid in your room. Where did you hide it? Go take it out. What you hid is private. Love letters, drugs, pornography, racing cars, I don't care what, a diary, toys. Actually go. My stuff was hidden over here. <laughs> and bring it out. You need to establish it. If it's a shoebox, touch it and bring it over here and open this up. Open it up. And take out that, what we call a personal object. Take it out and look at it. I want you to take this personal object out and look at it and touch it. Don't worry about feelings and emotions. None of that matters to actors. What matters is this is a personal object. And open it. Now, if it's a book, read it. If it's a toy, play with it. If it's a piece of clothing, wear it. If it's a piece of jewelry, enjoy it. But there it is. It's a private moment. Take it in. Don't rush. You can't rush this shit. I'll give you a minute, whatever it is, to be private. See, my focus now is here. And when I look up, I see my window. I want to look over there, I see my door, which is locked. I feel private to some degree. Even if you walk around your house now holding that private object, you are private. No acting needed. I'm not thinking private. I could go back up to my window, which happens to be right here now, and look outside while I'm holding this. And if I had words from a monologue, they would just come out. Blah, 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 blah. Look outside. Look over there. Now, this is called, and I took, please understand this, don't lose it, stay with it. This is what they call a private moment and a personal object. And for the most part, it's based on what we call reality. This is your real bedroom, and this object that you picked up is real. Got me? For the most part, that's what Lee Strasberg was all about. Not that you need to know that. It doesn't matter. It's an intellectual thing. But why I tell you, it's okay also to add what we call imaginary things, which was a lot of Stella. Go back to your box and sit there and find in that box or in that book, and we'll go what we call positive. You need to do both. I want you in that book or in that box or in that hiding thing. I want you to find a letter from one of your parents saying, hey, I know you've always hid this stuff. I really don't care. I love you to death. 
Just read it. There you go. It's an imaginary object. And I can pick up that imaginary letter, but it's imaginary based on reality, meaning it's imaginary, but it's based on my, it would be written the way my parent would write. I see my parents as writing, whichever one you pick, mom or dad, I would see their writing. See, that part has to be real. So I'm making imaginary stuff using real ingredients. So there's the letter of the parents saying, hey, I knew you always hit it here. I love you anyway. And look at that. Stand by your window, look at that. And now if you had lines from a script, that's what you'd be thinking. Blah, 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 blah. Private moment. Go back there now. Once again, please understand what we're doing here. It's called bulldozing stuff. I want you now to find it. It's a different letter. And this time, it's not positive. You can read whatever you like. Dear, whatever your name is. It's a heartbreak. We're disappointed in you. How could you? Whatever you want to hear or don't want to hear, it's written there. And automatically, our mind starts to go off in tangents. I want you, while you're sitting there holding this note, I want you to hear in the other room, mom and dad or mom or dad, whoever you like, they're literally in an argument over this piece of paper. They're saying things about this individual right here. And our job as actors, look at me for a sec, as an arrow comes flying, we know our weak spots. Your job is to take that arrow and land it there. Meaning when an actor says something, you know where that hurts you the most, your Achilles heel. So whatever they're saying, you know, that's what you interpret. I don't care what the script is about. I know exactly where it's gonna land. So hold that note, hold that note. Hear them argue. Now look at this, I don't have a script here, but this is what we call a private moment. The obvious thing is to go yelling at the door. We could do that, I could have a script and go, ah, shut the fuck up, whatever. Not a private moment, but is it? What could you do? Based on just this very simple example, could you freak out, could you panic? Could you decide to hide everything? Where would you hide it? I'll give you 10 seconds to hide it. Go right now, hide it, new spot. Hide it. Five, four, three, two, one, you hit it. During those last 10 seconds, you weren't thinking camera, you weren't thinking lines. You were thinking action and objective. That's acting. Not knowing when I'm gonna say my line and where I'm gonna be standing. That's, I don't wanna say what it is, but it is what it is. Not acting. Acting is working, of, like Meisner said, creating imaginary circumstances. That was a real moment. You didn't know where to hide it, and you can't hide it. You can't hide it. Now, that's mom and dad. And we picked a very, very simple example. Please understand this. There's the golden thing of what if. What if it wasn't just mom and dad out there? What if it was your best friend or your cousin? Or that person that you really don't want to know your business, but they're out there and you're gonna go, oh shit, ugh, oh God. They're out there. You just heard a knock on your door. Pick up your pillow. Pick up your pillow. You can scream, you can fuck. What's on that note is your business. 
very private. Not enough to think about it. You're going to touch it. Now, stay with me so we understand something now. Once again, please understand this. While you understand this intellectually for the next 10 minutes, this takes the rest of your life, if you're an actor, to master and to do it again and again so it doesn't become predictable. I want you all now to understand something, and I hope you can see the screen right now. I was sitting here with my window, and I'll pick something right about there is the, that's the top of the couch. See that couch over there? I'm pointing it on the screen. Right there is what the director, the director said, that's your point of uh, your, your, your eye line. 90% of actors, when they get a director says, here's your eye line, I want you to look over there. I'm now staring at a freaking blue couch. Or even worse, where's the pen and paper? Here's the pen and paper. Remember these things, folks? This is the camera lens. It's a great camera lens. Can you see it? Most directors say, I want you to look over here. And you're going to be staring at a camera lens. Do you know how much a camera lens feeds you? Close to zero. Do you know how much a camera lens feeds you with 20 people standing around? Worse. Our job as actors is to sit there and I'll imagine holding my pillow. And I'll imagine, I'll look outside now and I will look at the tree that my dad had planted. I'm seeing a tree now. I could look there. I could also look at my point of view over there, the other red chair. I'm now focused on the tree. It takes a few minutes, if not seconds, to literally think of the word cut and paste. The point is when I see that, I'm private. And right now, in theory, a whole bunch of people could walk in front of me. Or I could stop for a moment because I go, stop, we have to tape and we have to do lights and shit like that. Don't go, oh boy, that was fun. How are you? What's for lunch? No, you stay in your bedroom. Stay in your bedroom. It's a freaking body. It's not a machine. Most people don't understand that, including the filmmakers of the world, the actors, the directors, and all that shit. It's, this is not a machine, guys. It takes time to warm up and stay warm. And the way you stay warm is you stay in your zone. So you walk around hugging your pillow while they do the camera, while they do the lights. I'm private. This is private. And I go back there and I look outside and I see the glass. And I put my hand on the glass and I look at the window and I look at the tree. I've cut and paste what I've explored. And now they say, guess what? We're now doing it this window. Take a moment, cut and paste. Right there. I'm private again. Privacy. It's a big thing in our world. See, and you still, until you let it go, which we're going to let it go soon, until you let it go, you're private. And I tell people, don't let it go till not just they say cut. They say cut and move on. Because they could say cut and go, wait, we want to do another take. If you let it go, it's over. If they say cut and move on to another scene or another something, then let it go. But always hover in it. So if they say cut, we might do one more take. Go to your corner, create the room, hold on to your pillow, look at the letter that you need. And it's all right there. And another thing, as we said last week and the week before, and God knows when else, I've now imagined that le love letter that I found, either the love letter where the parents are happy. It's not enough to think of things. I don't care if I write it now. I'm just going to make up this letter. We are very happy that you kept all your stuff in the little shoebox. We know, ha, 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 ha. Write it, put it in your pocket. It feeds you. It feeds you. I touch it now, and it's all right there. You guys got me? That, in a nutshell... It's a very small example. There's thousands more. It's a very small example of how to be private in a room. 
you can take that and blend lines with it. Because at any given moment now, depends on what the scene is, by the way, this is how I can make adjustments. I could be a private character in a private moment. Now, when someone came in the room, you would change. You'd go, hey, how are you, blah, blah, blah. You put on your private or your public face. Or I could still stay the same. <sighs> Pillow, tree, and another character just came in. But they're close. And you just talk like this. Nothing changes. They know who I am. I know who they are. And I would just say my lines like this. And that's it private it takes your work to a whole other level most of us are worried because we don't know what it's going to sound like most of us are worried because well i should say the line oh, i don't have a freaking clue how i'm going to say my line till that person talks all i know is i'm reflecting off the tree i got the letter of appreciation or the letter of devastation from the parents or from the whoever you like and i've got my private stash over there Acting, it's a skill. Do you understand me? That's the point to all this stuff, right? Now, really quickly, please understand, and I'm saying this again and again so you understand, to do this once is nothing. To do this again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and for the rest of your acting life, it's a skill. And if you wanna become a skill, you wanna become a craftsman, which separates you from most other actors, You've got to do this on your own. Find a monologue, five to 10 lines, and do this while you're there. Find a monologue and just explore this stuff while you're doing a monologue, and then find out what feeds it. If I see the tree out in the backyard, it's one memory. If I see the tree and dad's next to it, it's another memory. If I see the tree and mom and dad are arguing, that's a different memory. If I see the tree, no one's there and the tree's dying, I got news for you. If that tree's dying, how do you think it makes me feel? What if the tree was dying? That's a whole different monologue right there to look outside and go, oh my God, there goes the freaking tree, abandoned. It could make you feel all those things. Or if I look at the tree and go, oh, it's beautiful, the rose, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna go, wow, wow, what a backyard. My God, it was beautiful. Oh, I miss it. There was family and there was love and there was adventures and there was parties and blah 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 and the monologue would come out like this see i'm not thinking result i'm thinking what feeds it which is everything in acting you got me now in the next five minutes or so we're going to look at the monologues really quickly i want to see the monologues and i want to see some uh, show reels and then if this time we'll do another exercise at the end but i want to get them done out the way and we'll talk about what we're doing next week also, right? We're gonna talk about uh, your scripts, which I assume most of you have not written, and your character work, which even more of you haven't done. Okay, I know, it's your work, not mine. All right, your career. Fair enough. So if we can start soon, I'll get my lovely tech people here. Or whoever's on there, I think Anik is there. Can we see Jazz's showreel? Are you there, Jazz? And folks, if you've got all, send us a note or do something. I think we're going to see four or five of them. It's important that you get your work out there. It's important that we look at it and discuss it. Guys, let me know. Daniel, were you there, man? We've got a few Wait. people. Just give me a second. I'm going to put this show up. No problem. I'll have a glass of water while we do this. Hey, guys, for some reason, I can't start my video, but I'm ready. I'm 100% ready. Let's see it. Can we see it or what's going on? Is it your video? Uh, I'm trying to start our video so you can see us. Oh, okay. Anik, can we help him somehow? Oh, here we go. Thank you. Disabled. Okay, I think we're figuring it out now. Start video. There we go. There we oh, go. Hey. Where's your show? Yep. Do you have okay. your show reel? So, you okay, so what I've got, so listen, I didn't realize you were going to let me into the class for the rest of the series. I thought this was the only chance I was going to get. So I'll cut you a show real next that. week. But what I've got for you this week is a little character piece. It's not, I want to make it clear. It's not a scene. It's not a story. It's just literally the first test shoot we did. Um, and they said, here's some freedom. Uh, just be the character in these boundaries. And I did some yep. exploration in character as Simon. This is Simon. I'll give you a taste of him and Let's then we'll discuss him. who he is. 
let's okay. see him. So do I just yep. go into chat and push the video or is that your job? I'll play it. I, okay. Let, have a Nick do it. A Nick will do, I, I'm an idiot. Beautiful. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn on a computer and, you know. So we have it, right? We have the, 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 Vimeo link. It's the first link, the yep. Vimeo one. Cool, cool. He's got it. <clears throat> cool, guys. <clears throat> and then whoever's on after this, let us know. So we get going. I'm just checking my text messages. It's people saying I'm doing my reel and I'm not. Okay, let's see this. All right, let's see this. Go for it, Paul. Let's see this.
papi. Okay, tell us briefly yeah. what this is about, where it's going. We'll, we'll, we'll play it again one more time, go through it bits and bits. So here. this was just exploration of character with me, uh, freedom within boundaries, and the guys were just testing some shots that they liked. Um, so it was more exploration process. Like these gloves, for example, I found out that I had a better grip on the camera by wearing these gloves. So now these are going to be Simon's gloves. Um, this camera that I was using... Simon got this on his 12th birthday. It was his first real film camera that his mum got him. Right. His mum died on his 13th birthday. She fell down the stairs and she was dying. You, you know how there's a flight or fight or flight uh, kind of uh, reaction? He froze. He froze and he didn't know what to do. He couldn't call the ambulance. The camera was hanging around his neck. All he could do was sit there and take photos of his mother while she was dying. And, so, so um, let me ask you a quick question. Well, what's the character? Who is he after? Who is he photographing? He's, he's, uh, he's just on, uh, on a job uh, looking at some yachts and some rich people and looking at some... That's his day job. That's how he puts food on the table. But his real passion is he's a street photographer. He's interested in getting truthful moments. You know, he wants to capture people unaware that the camera's there. He wants to be so skillful at, at getting these raw, pure moments of people on the street. And where, where is this going? What are you going? Is this going to become a short film or what? What, what are you doing? This is our next, This is his first feature and my second feature. Um, right. So it's yeah, it's it's legit. It's going to be uh, really exciting, and I, I want to go really deep in character. There's one thing in particular we wanted to ask you, and then like feel free to go nuts. Um, throughout the film, there's a element with added where his vision actually starts to go. So this, the image and camera and uh, that he holds so dearly to him uh, on such a high pedestal, his vision starts to go and it starts to disappear to the point where he goes blind at the end. Like this isn't something glasses can fix. Right. And right. we're wondering how would you show that at, in a very subtle way as an actor, how would you show that subtle process of slowly going blind throughout the arc of the film to the end where he's fully blind? Part of that is writing, why yeah. he's blind, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, why he's blind is a big deal. Yeah. But based on what I saw, yeah. I'll tell you something. Okay. Uh, was, the girl, was the girl on the bike, was she an actress or that was just there? She was just there. I was going to go catch someone else and then I saw the girl on the bike and I sat back down. Right. And I thought, oh, he's a perfect subject, you know? Look, basically, the moments of you in the car... Yeah. You've got, look, I'll give an example. Why do you put the mask on at the beginning and take it off? Because Simon wants to learn how to wear a mask without wearing a mask sort of thing. He was just experimenting in the mirror. He wants to be, he doesn't want to be seen. He wants to blend in. He wants to be invisible. Okay. But then you're, see, a, a friend of mine was in a play in New York, right? Yeah. And he played a Russian spy and De Niro turned up with a friend of his who's an actual yeah. Russian spy. Yeah. Meaning I need to believe that this guy is going to get out there on the streets and not yeah. be noticed. Yeah, yeah. You, a lot of what you did, shouts yeah. out, I can spot you a mile away. All right, cool. Yeah. Now, there's a, a whole thing where they did, uh, and you can find this on YouTube, Google, yeah. don't do it now, uh, yeah, Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom Cruise delivering UPS packages. Yeah. If, for a film, I forgot which one it was for. And they said to him, if you want to play this guy, yeah. you have to be unnoticed in the real world. And yeah. he actually got a job as a UPS guy and delivered UPS and making sure that no one noticed it was Tom Cruise. Meaning, yeah. I could spot you a mile away. I wouldn't yeah. wear that mask if I didn't want to be seen. I wouldn't yeah. comment on the dog as that would walk past. 
Okay, and that was just to manipulate her. That was just to manipulate her to get the shot. Yeah, but you get my point. It sticks yeah. out to us. Like, yeah. and watch okay, what yeah. you do. Yeah, Anik, if we can just go to the moment before the girl approaches. See, you don't have to act nervous. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I got you. I got you. You don't have to act nervous. Exactly He's, you know what I'm and I'll be learning this because I'm tomorrow I'm getting film roll and I'm going to take this. Like, and you've yeah. got to make sure that every photograph is real. You literally need to just, yeah. you, you, you know, look at this. You're yeah. acting nervous. Don't. Yeah. Right? Now, once again, please understand this. We can justify it any way we like. At the end of the day, it's what we see. Yeah. That's what they say. Less is more. Just sit there. I wouldn't comment on the dog. You'd freak the woman out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's also, true. Yeah, 100%. And also the shots of you later on, if we can just jump ahead, Anik, to where you're leaning down. And taking photos of them. Yeah. Look, look, all this stuff. Yeah. Just go incognito. Look at that. That yeah. right there. Pause right there. Oh, great. Well, we had it. You yeah. can't get away with that. Well, I did on the day. They there were actually a group of people at the yachts and they didn't notice. But, but here's the point. Day. For our film, this looks yeah. like I call the cops on you. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. The yeah. point is this: we need to understand this, and I'm glad the filmmaker's right next door. Yes, I yeah. could justify it. Say, hey, there was a bunch of people there, but they also saw the cameraman, so they're probably yeah. assuming you make the film. That's if true. Yeah, that's true. If a regular yeah. person saw this, they'd go, "He's up to something." Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Less is more. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. But you still need to take the photograph to zoom in to do whatever he does. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And not yeah. get caught. Look at the Tom Cruise thing. Yeah. He delivered. If I asked you go to a store and take a photo yeah. of someone without acting notice, you get in trouble. So don't yeah. go to a real store. Try it at home. <laughs> Try and take, yeah. Of course, the yeah. point is to do with incognito. Even if I yeah. said to you, okay, over the next week, everyone that comes to your house or everyone, try sneaking a photograph without them knowing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you got busted once, it would be over. If your life yeah. depended on it, you do it. Yeah. Yeah. See, you have to elevate it at such a level. Yeah. Where there's yep. no, there's no, uh, there's no ambiguity. Well, maybe you could have got away with it. Maybe you couldn't. No, you can't yep. get away with that shot. No. Yep. I'm walking around. What the hell is he doing? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's yep. it's only against a matter of choice. But you, the the point is, we're going to compare him to every amazing film we've seen, and that's the bottom line yep. these days. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So yep. make sure you get what you want, and then there has to be a reason of why he's getting. Look, to shoot rich people in a yacht, who gives a shit? To, yep. to be pursuing a lover, to be, you know, a private eye, you know, make sure you get seen. Pick someone this week from your life and yep. get five photos that they'll never notice. Yeah, cool. Because yeah, you're going to we'll... learn things. You're going to learn things. And then follow them yeah. on the street. If you yeah, that's a... what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start being, I've already set up an Instagram account as his alias, and I'm going to start going out on the street. You don't get caught. Because like yeah. I said, if your life depended on it, Tom Cruise yeah. managed to pull it off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No one mm -hmm. noticed it was Tom Cruise. So yeah. then it comes down to what can we accept? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what can we accept that we would buy and sell? The music mm -hmm. works. It, 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 that, that works. It, it's, 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 it's intriguing enough where I want to go, what's going on, what's going on? Yeah. The rest now is in the storytelling. Yeah, I mean, this is literally something we put together in two hours. We've got a long, long way to go. This yeah, is very looks, early. Starting, it's interesting enough. Yeah. But what, what the two of you, whatever yeah. doesn't feel right, just get rid mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, cool. You know, yeah. So really quickly, someone said, you put your character on a tree and you throw stones at him. That's what you want here. Meaning okay. nothing could be like, hey, they could get caught. You're not going to get caught. Yeah. Do it so well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I actually know real people that uh, do this kind of shit, like spies and shit. You uh -huh. would never notice them. And yeah. that's, the, yeah. that's, that, that's the level he has to think of. Yeah. If his life depends, if, if you got caught, it's over. Mm -hmm. So don't show him anything. Yeah, you know what cool. I'm saying? I understand. That's I understand. Yeah, I'm going to work on that. That's cool. We'll talk again. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. And feel, feel free to share the page with all of us. Say, guys, this is my work. So you get the word out there. So you create not just a buzz, you get feedback and stuff. Yeah, feel free to cool. Do that. You know what I'm saying? Good. Take care, guys. We'll talk. Awesome. Right? Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Let me, we've got... One, uh, let's see what time is. We've got a couple more minutes. Uh, really quickly, there's Tatiana. Tatiana Lee, you ready? Someone sent me a note. She was trying to go last week. Can we find a, a Tatiana Lee? Is she on there? Yeah. 
Oh, oh there you go. Tatiana, down the bottom, bottom right. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Tatiana, are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Let's see you. Cool. Put your video on. Um, do, you, do you see your Nick? Bottom right. Oh, from my screen anyway. Go for it. Okay. I used to pray. I really did. That first year when I loved you, that we have children. I said this when it began, when it all started, when you had to move up. Saved the child. Like Rob said, a combination half you, half me, and I wanted that. And I pictured him. He was sometimes a boy, sometimes a girl. He was as light as you sometimes, or as dark as me, or darker. Kinds of funny hair problems that I had to contend with. And he was always very bright. Let me ask you a question. Pause for a sec. Where's this from? Uh, it's from the Gingham Dog by Landon Wilson. What's, oh, what's going on here? Tell me what's going on in the scene. It's uh, um, a, a three-year relationship, and, like a couple, a married couple, and they are going through a divorce, and they're separating, and they're packing up and stuff, and they're kind of just, they're at a point where they're just kind of railing on each other, like it got to. So the relationship's over at this stage? Yeah, yeah, they're separated and they're packing up their stuff and they're moving out and they got into a really big argument. At this point. What could you use? <laughs> if this was your house. Yeah. And you had to leave right now. Right now. I want you to do the monologue as you pick up everything in that room that's yours. Pick up everything. And if there's other people in the house, tell them to fuck off. <laughs> Say, go away, let me do my thing. Now, remember what we just talked about. It doesn't start down here. Yeah, okay. It doesn't, and we don't mean screaming and yelling either. It's not about that. That's neck up. Yeah. Right now, what time is it where you are? It is, um... <laughs> what? It's 3 in the morning. 3 a.m.? Yeah. Where would you go right now if you were kicked out of your house at 3 a.m.? What was that? Where would you go right now if you were kicked out at 3 a.m.? Oh, gosh. I don't know. My mom's. <laughs> yes. See, if you have an out, it's easy. Then you can just pick up your stuff and leave. What if there was no mom and there was no money? Where would you go right now? Um, Nowhere. Uh, Pack up no. your stuff. Say the monologue. And what? while you pack, pack up your stuff as you say the monologue, what's the first line? I used to pray. What? I used to pray. Yeah. How good was praying for you? Keep going. Pack up your stuff. Pack up your stuff. You're leaving. You're I used to pray. I really did. That first year that I loved you, that we'd have children. I said this when it began. Only at first, really, when it all started, when you had to move up. Okay, pause there. I'm going to send you a note. This is private notes. Okay. A lot of times, as, as directors and a person, do you, you get your phone with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, check your phone. Okay. Don't think, just do it. It's coming now. Don't think. Take one minute, 30 seconds to make this real. Now, what I shared with her is very private. I'm just taking a stab in the dark here. Because 
Sometimes we use what's literal. Ad lib, ad lib the line. Don't think. Have a little argument. Hear what they're saying to you. They're saying, fuck off. Get out of here. And say it. What? And don't what? act. That's that. Yep. Fuck Keep off. going. Fuck you. Like, I used to fucking pray that this would work what out. Did you pray of? What you prayed of. Now, if you say the line having children, it won't make sense. But you can think of whatever like you like and say it to him. I'm not here. Go for it. I used to pray that that we would work out that we would. I used to pray that things would work out, that you wouldn't leave. I used to pray that you still loved me. And he's saying, "Get the fuck out of my house! Get the fuck out of my house!" Fuck you! I'm getting out. Fine. Get the fuck it. I don't care but you gotta say the words of the script. You gotta say the words of the script. I used to pray, I really did. That first year at the hutch, when I loved you, that we'd have children. I said this when it began. When we had don't to do it all, get the fuck out of the house. Pray and leave. See, don't stop to do the lines. You get me? What? Don't stop to do the lines. Get out of the house as you leave. But why don't you pick up as to be private and personal? I used to pray, I really did, that first year in the hutch when I loved you, that when we have children. I said this when it began, when it all started, when you had to move up, only at first, really. That this all right, could be let's, let's pause there. Have you seen Marriage Story? What? Have you seen Marriage Story? Um, no, no. Watch it. Okay. Look, look it's, it's not a bad scene for you. You understand what, I mean, it doesn't have to be literal. Yeah. But what we're fighting is an actor just standing there and doing lines, which was you at the beginning. Yeah. And when I gave you that choice, it's not enough to think about it. You've got to take time to create it. Hug. Make that person real and make it matter. It's not a bad monologue for you. Work on it again. Yeah, okay. Try really quickly before we go, because it's 3 a.m., you got to get to bed. Try the literal thing, meaning what it's about, and then try the other choice. But when you leave this house, you're never seeing this person again. See, in our mind, we know we're seeing them again. It's safe. And watch Marriage Story. Okay. I'm fine if we see this again in a few weeks. We'll talk. Okay, cool. Okay. Talk. Go to bed. Okay, <laughs> one more. Paul. One more, and then we'll get out of here. Paul, I think Paul Milson, last one, right? Where's Paul? Someone send me a photo, or someone send me something. No? Okay. Because I want to finish at 9 o'clock. Because I got my lovely team volunteering here. Paul, if we don't have it, we'll see you next week. Okay, you gotta, uh... okay, we'll see you next week. Okay, guys? Now, really quickly, I want you all to hear this for next week while I still have you. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna start classes again in two weeks from now. So I, next week is the last class we're doing on a Thursday night. Because two weeks from now, I assume and I hope that I'm able to teach again so I'll be teaching. Uh, we started this for eight weeks, and now it's like the 10th or 12th week. I need to talk to my team over here. Next week, it's the last class that we're doing for a Thursday night. After that, I have to sit down with myself, with my team, and have a serious discussion about where we go from here, right? We'll post this class. Why I need your attention now. Next week, we're going to do one exercise. It's called, and we're gonna try it online, it's called the drunk exercise. Nothing to do with grandma and grandpa. It would help if you all had a monologue. Doesn't have to be a drunk monologue, or I could find one. How about this? I'll pick three monologues and I'll put them on the website and I'll say, learn these enough. And it takes about 40 minutes to have the skill of how to not act drunk, how to get the drunk thing in the body. And you need a safe place. 
safe environment. And the other thing you need to do is grab a glass, like I like drinking gin and tonic. I'll send you my address. You can send me a bunch of bottles or scotch and whatever you like. <laughs> Let's assume you drink gin and tonic. You need the glass, you need the ice, you need the lime, and you need the tonic. No gin. If you're drinking scotch, go make some tea. Never drink on a set. Ever. And every time I say this, people go, oh, but I heard someone. You're not that someone. Okay? It's a skill. Because if you have a couple of drinks, two hours from now, your body will be tired. There goes the whole film set that will hit you. If it's a skill, you've got to learn. So we'll do the drunk exercise next week. You need a safe place, but you need all your ingredients. Fair enough. And we'll try it and we'll go from there. Uh, well, I'm going to talk to my team, see where we're all at and where we head from here. And I'll, maybe I'll email you all to say, guys, what night works better for everyone or what daytime so that we can do this. And then I'll see where, where we're headed because we just started this with not sure where we're going, but now we have to, you know, decide because I start class in two weeks. So two weeks, sometimes I might even film a class. So we're in class and you guys can get a snippet of what we do, right? Please work. Please do relaxation. Please do sensory work. Keep writing your short script. It's important. Work on character work. I'll see you all next week. And we're going to do the drunk exercise. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, there we go. Peter. See you next week. Thanks for today, Peter.